Hey DC fans, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. We just got revealed the full lineup of movies that Warner Brothers is planning to release from now until the year 2025. Not only their upcoming movies, but their Disney Plus level TV shows that they're also working on. Even some straight to HBO Max movies of famous heroes we've been waiting to see. So all that I'm going to be doing here for you guys is running down through all these up and coming movies that just got revealed from Warner Brothers on what they're planning to do. But I'm also need you guys to let me know your excitement for which one you're most looking forward to which one you think is going to be absolute garbage at the same time though i want to caution people warner brothers out of most studios has been the worst at revealing what they plan to release and then out of nowhere going yeah forget all that let's change the plans don't get too attached here because anything on this list might disappear in the next couple months all right so this was all revealed through an at&t investors day meeting where they go ahead and inform their stockholders of the future of their company what they're planning to do and that's where we got this whopping photo of of all the upcoming projects. Some of this stuff might look familiar to you guys. Other stuff, you're like, whoa, what the heck is that? So starting off here, right in the top hand corner, we have Black Adam. Obviously, we know what this Black Adam movie is. The film is set to star Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Black Adam. We even have already confirmed cast members who will be playing the Justice Society of America, which is kind of like the Justice League. But in the olden times, we have Noah Centineo playing Adam Smasher, Aldous Hodge playing Hawkman, Quintessa Swindle playing Cyclone. We have still yet to know who Dr. Fate is going to be played by, but essentially, these Justice Society of America superheroes are going to be coming in to fight Black Adam, Dwayne Johnson, as we kind of get his origin story, and I'm still curious to see whether they're going to make him an anti-hero, a straight-up villain, or a guy who's just misunderstood. Next couple ones we have here on the list is the Harley Quinn TV series, just the new up-and-coming season. I remember watching a couple episodes of that, and I did like it. I just have to get back on that train. Superman and Lois, which I just did recently start watching, even though I'm not a huge fan of CW superheroes. I gotta admit, Superman and Lois is really good so far. Highly recommend it to you guys. You don't have to know anything about the Arrowverse. This show is standalone and doesn't connect to anything else. And I am not joking when I say this is one of the best live action adaptations of Superman so far. They even gave this show a really good budget. So if you're willing to check that out, I highly recommend it. But the next big money maker here I want to talk about is the Static Shock movie. Now this is going to be a live action Static Shock film. As we know it so far, it is going to be straight for HBO Max though I'm hoping they change their minds and they make this a theater release. All we really know right now is that this is going to be produced by Michael B. Jordan. He's the one at Warner Brothers who's trying to make this project happen. And Michael B. Jordan is currently set to direct Creed 3. So he's testing out his chops in directing ability. Maybe once that movie comes out, Warner Brothers gets a better idea of how good of a director he is and he might direct the movie himself. But don't expect Michael B. Jordan to play Static Shock. They're most likely going to get a younger teenage actor to play Static. But being a fan and growing up of this TV series, I can't wait to see what they do with the character and for other people to fall in love with him. Because I really didn't think they'd be coming out with a live action Static Shock film. The other movie here that they are confirming that we already have a director attached to is the Blue Beetle movie. Another superhero I am so happy is being brought into the live action fold. Again, this seems to be an HBO Max only movie. So it's being made straight for their streaming service platform, which again i just hope that they change their minds and release it in theaters as well now this version of blue beetle is going to be directed by angel manuel soto he's already come out and commented about how excited he is to be working a part of this movie and bringing the character of blue beetle to life specifically jaime reyes which is the latin version of blue beetle they're going to be bringing a teenager who was just at the wrong place at the wrong time gets this blue beetle backpack attached to his back and then gets these alien superpowers really an awesome funny character that has a lot of potential on the big screen in my opinion the only thing that does about some of these new heroes that they're introducing is their streaming service only. It would be kind of cool if they managed to make it a shared universe because as it stands right now, it looks like they're going with the solo route that each one of these characters is the only superhero in their world. Another confirmation here that we were up in the air if we were getting, but now Warner Brothers has confirmed, is the live action Batgirl movie. Now for the longest time, this Batgirl movie was in development. At one point, Joss Whedon was set to direct the Batgirl movie, but Ain't no way in hell that is happening now with the drama Joss Whedon has stirred up and some of the things that have been uncovered about the way he treats his employees. Still the screenwriter who brought us Birds of Prey, Christina Hodson, is tapped to write the script and bring the character alive. Again, this is just going to be another teenage superhero brought into the fold, but like Barbara Gordon's story is kind of integral with Batman being there. I don't know how they're going to pull this off, whether this is going to be a standalone universe where Barbara Gordon is going to get a different version of Batman that is 
not Ben Affleck, Robert Pattinson. She could be in her own world because in the Flash movie, they're set to create the multiverse where there's different characters all over the place. Still unclear whether that'll come to fruition, but a Batgirl movie could be something very cool, all depending how they handle the Gotham universe and mentioning Batgirl is out there fighting crime without Batman by her side. From there, something you guys are probably familiar with, we have the Peacemaker TV series. This is going to be the spin-off HBO Max series from the new Suicide Squad that is being directed by James Gunn. But it'll just basically be us following the origin story of Peacemaker played by John Cena and that superhero. Really curious to see how this turns out. I don't know how excited I am for it. I'm going to have to see Suicide Squad or a trailer for this Peacemaker TV series first. But that's coming along. Then we move over here to Green Lantern. Now something interesting I want to know here is in the logo they showed off, it just says Green Lantern. When we've known for the longest time, this is said to be called Green Lantern Corp and it's going to be the Green Lantern TV series headed to HBO Max. Now I want to remind you guys these HBO Max TV series are set to get the big budget adaptation something similar to what Disney Plus is doing with their Marvel TV shows. One interesting thing to note about the Green Lantern TV series is that it's going to be following multiple incarnations of Green Lanterns of the past from Earth Green Lanterns to other planet Green Lanterns even from different time periods. Characters like Alan Scott, Guy Gardner, Simon Baz, Jessica Cruz, and Sinestro will all be part of this TV series. Really curious to see how they handle that storytelling, whether each episode is kind of an anthology following a different lantern at a different time period, doing a different mission. From there, a movie that should be no surprise because the first one made a billion dollars is we have Aquaman 2 in the works. Jason Momoa is returning as Aquaman. I was completely surprised with how much I ended up liking the first Aquaman, so of course I'm excited for this one. I believe James Wan is also coming back to direct the second film. From there, probably one of my most anticipated upcoming DC movies and that is The Flash. My main excitement for this Flash movie comes because it will be a multiverse type film where it's adapting the Flashpoint Paradox storyline where instead of Barry Allen traveling back in time and messing up his future he is going to be traveling to multiple universes in the DC universe meeting Michael Keaton's Batman. We already also got confirmation of the Latin Supergirl that will be in this movie and we are set to get multiple other versions of DC characters. This film is set to be the key of how Warner Brothers is planning to do the rest of their movies and explain how some movies can take place in different universes, stand alone, some can connect. So they really need to nail it on the head with this Flash movie. You also have another season of Teen Titans Go coming up. That's cool. This particular Suicide Squad logo is for the upcoming Suicide Squad video game, which I am excited to play. And probably everyone's number one most anticipated thing on this list is Bat Wheels. If you didn't think they were milking the Batman character enough, they are making a CG animated television show for children where it follows the adventures of Batman's car titled Bat Wheels. I'm not making this stuff up. It's real. Then you have the Batman that's going to be played by Robert Pattinson. Really, really pumped for this film. You guys know it's been Batmania on my channel every time we've gotten to talk some Batman. Right now, the film is actually still currently filming, but is almost done. We've already gotten some photos of actors and crew members who have been part of the Batman film that have finished their scenes. So I'm hoping when the movie officially finally wraps, we get some more footage or details about it, but it's still going to be a long time before we see more awesome Batman stuff. Another surprise here that was was rumored for the longest time and now is officially confirmed is the live action interpretation of Zatanna. Now Zatanna is a character I'm familiar with and really excited to see them bring to life. I remember first being introduced to the Zatanna character through a PSP Justice League video game. I'll put a screen grab of that right now but that's where I was like who is this beautiful magician on screen and where can I find out more about her? But she just basically plays this magician by day who actually has magical capabilities, fights crime at night, and you know, one of Superman's weaknesses is magic, so Satana can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman. They didn't give much information in the Investors Day meeting about this live-action Satana, so we don't even know if it's going to be a TV series or it's going to be a straight-to-HBO Max movie. If I had to put my money on it, I'm thinking it's a straight-to-HBO Max movie, but if it is a TV series, I'd be willing to watch that as well. It's just another obscure DC character not many people know about that they're finally going to be able to bring to life. Then of course you have the finale of Supergirl coming up. Okay, if you're excited for that, awesome. We also have Shazam 2 entitled Shazam Fury of the Gods. They are actually currently filming this movie right now, so production has already started, which is good because those kids are growing up fast. I was really swept away by the first Shazam, so I'm definitely excited for this one. Another season and continuation of the Batwoman CW TV series. Again, if you're excited for that, that's awesome. Then you have the Suicide Squad movie coming 
coming out by James Gunn. Still waiting for that full length feature trailer. So surprised that the Batman is two years away and we got a full trailer for that, but not Suicide Squad. Then you have GCPD, which is going to be the spin off series based off Robert Pattinson's Batman universe. This HBO Max series will take place one year before the movie and it'll follow James Gordon and what the Gotham Police Department starts looking like when they start to see a man dressed up as a bat going around fighting crime and doing their jobs. Definitely gives off Gotham vibes, but I'm hoping this turns out good and anything to see more of that Robert Pattinson world. Couple ones I'll list off here is DMZ. This is based off a graphic novel from Vertigo in the DC lineup. It just as a topian future where it's people versus the government not too interested in that the Gotham Knights video game look I've been really excited with the Batman games but this one being that Batman is dead and you have to play other characters in the Bat family not sure if I'm that excited for that but I'll play it nonetheless just to be Nightwing then you have Superhero High which at this moment I'm not sure is if it's live action or animated but it's the daughters of a lot of superheroes going to high school you don't know if you're excited for that but that's cool if you are one I am looking forward to though that we've gotten a little bit of footage of is DC League of Super Pets this is gonna be the CG animated movie based off the pets from the DC superheroes that's going to be following Crypto the Super Dog, Ace the Bat Hound, along with so many other characters thrown in. I think this just seems like a fun family movie, but Warner Brothers has kind of been stepping off their game with their animated movies. Just look at the film Scoob. So I'm hoping this one could be a nice little fun treat in the DC universe. Nonetheless, that is the full lineup of movies that DC is currently planning right now. Like I said, guys, they could take stuff away or they could add more stuff. I know there's a lot of people hoping that they restore the Snyderverse or or there's a Batfleck HBO Max series that I just don't think will happen. Of course, the hope that Justice League Part 2 and 3 get greenlit and they continue that universe. But even then, I still don't know if that'll happen. Nonetheless, this is what the world is looking like right now for the DC Universe. Which is your most anticipated movie? Which could you care less about? Anything and everything, be sure to leave your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Film Review. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.